you guys back uh, with another video from Wolf Life Wild. We're out here fishing today in uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, and I already see some fish surfacing. So hopefully we'll have some luck today and maybe do a catch and cook video. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Not really sure what kind of baits or lures I'm going to use today, but um, I'm going to go ahead and start getting set up right now, and I'll show you guys what I'm using. I'm going to go ahead and rig it up with one of these little spinner lures and I got this from Walmart hopefully you can see that pretty well they work pretty darn well for trout but we'll see I have caught in a little largemouth bass with this so we'll see what else we could get on this see if uh, or how much luck we have with this pretty confident in it especially if uh, there's trout like I think there is right here uh, hopefully we could get a pike or something on a walleye would be great but I've never myself caught any walleye in this area so we'll see how it goes though but like I said spinner lure usually does pretty good with trout we'll see how this goes so I got my spinner rigged up and I keep seeing a lot of action in this area over here which is actually where my other two rods are cast out See, we just had a blow up over there. I'm gonna go try over there. Pretty confident I'll catch a trout. Um, <clears throat> it's a similar area where I rigged up my other two rods or where I casted them. I don't really wanna get tangled up in those, so I'm gonna try and avoid that. But at the same time, I do wanna go for these fish. If the lures are gonna catch them and not the night crawlers, and I wanna give myself the best opportunity to catch him so let's go ahead and take the first cast get to a good spot here let's see if we can get something on our first very first cast that wasn't a very I'm already getting tangled up in the weeds. Huh. Okay. That first cast didn't go very well. caught up in the weeds way too much over there so I'm gonna try and move to a different spot now see if that works out all right so the wind is really picking up right now and this lure the pretty light lure oh, there's a hawk feather the pretty light lure and uh, I'm not really liking the way this is working out because of the wind this area is not really good for how the wind is hitting <clears throat> getting caught in too many weeds and stuff so um might try switching to a different lure and might just decide to go somewhere else if things are not going too well we'll see let me check out my tackle box i'm gonna go ahead and uh, switch to a spinner bait or i mean uh, a grub with a jig head right now these i got these on sale so I'm going to try these out. The spinner wasn't really working for me right now just because of all the weeds and the wind and everything. So I'll try that jig head or the grub on a jig head and I'll see how that goes and then work from there. Let's go ahead and cast. 
pass this out and see what we could do. Feels like we got a good fish on. This is on the grub. Yup, we got a pike. Yup, we got a good fish on. Look at that. How about this guy? Luckily he didn't come off because I have some pretty light line. These guys are slippery so you gotta be careful. That's a nice one. Check that out. Let me get him over to my fishing line over there. His teeth are pretty sharp too. Yeah, he's got some really sharp teeth. You gotta be careful when you put your fingers in their gills like this. You're gonna carry them. Don't really wanna carry them by their body. They're pretty slippery. They're probably slimier than the average fish. And that sounds like there's another really big pike over there, so I'm gonna go for that one. Probably going for all those trout over there. There we go, got the hook out. My left hand. fish actually this is probably the first fish I've ever caught at this lake but I don't typically don't fish here it's not my favorite lake in the world so it's pretty good Get this guy back in the water heard another big one over here is um, they're big time predator fish so they eat all the other game fish around so you have less fish to catch so with this pike that I caught a little while ago and if I catch another one I'm gonna go ahead and uh, probably take them home and cook them up or maybe give them away to somebody that might want to cook them up fish to go around and they're not eating all of them. They multiply pretty quick and survive pretty well anyways. That's probably the most dominant species of fish that there is out here in this, in this lake. You don't really see too many other fish other than stocked trout. I've heard there's walleye in here. to ever catch one. Hey guys, so I came up to Lake Ashurst here in Arizona off of the lake that I was just at, which is Lake Mary. And that's just right down the hill. I got frustrated with all the weeds and uh, the wind down there. It's pretty calm up there, or down there. And um, once I got up here, it was really calm. Uh, but it got pretty windy right now and the cloud moved in. It seemed like the fish activity was going up now that the, the sun has gone away. I just caught a rainbow trout, so that was on one of those spinners that I was using earlier. Let me show you guys this. I added a weight so I could cast further. Caught him on this thing right here. I'll 
show you guys in a moment some some tips for that because um because of the way I use it. Got another one. It's a trout. It's a nice sized one. It's not small, but it's not big. That's what she said. Trout. Yeah, huh? From the house it's a nice trout. Yep, sure enough, when that sun went away, that's when we caught a fish. start reeling it in real fast and then maybe slow down see how the tip of my rod is kind of bending like that that's what I like to see out of it that means that's probably spinning and it's kind of fighting the water which is what you want kind of go at a gradual pace a couple two weeks ago just a couple weeks ago oh there we go we got a nice nice bite right there came out a couple weeks ago and caught a couple of them I got one right now look at that it's another nice rainbow Got a fish on my bobber, he has it way underwater. That bobber's moving pretty fast. I like the look of that. It's a strong fish, this is a really good fish right here. It's a really nice trout right there. That time, I'll 
show you guys what I used that time. Well, anyways, it was one of those killer crawler night crawlers from Gulp. Now, just for the hell of it, I got a few fish now. I'm just gonna throw one of these Rusty's baby shads on here. Wounded red belly shad. <clears throat> Don't know if it's gonna work. Probably not if there's only trout in here, which is what I'm being told. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do this how I do the anchovies. through and then I guess we'll try it on a bobber that's strong and that fish was really strong my bobber just completely disappeared for a few minutes there so we'll try this on and see how it goes all right we're gonna let this guy go because I caught a pretty good amount of fish today and it doesn't seem like everybody's gonna eat them with me Come on, guy. You're supposed to make this majestic, like Pocahontas. Being difficult. There he goes. Volcanoes way in the back over there. Today, <clears throat> I just let one go. I had caught two others. I didn't record. I let them go. Uh, might not keep all of them right now. Definitely keeping these two big guys right here. And uh, probably cook them up tonight. All right, guys, so I'm all done at the grocery store. Got some groceries for today's catch and cook. It's pretty late right now. I'm actually pretty tired. But I'm going to drink a Red Bull, see if that helps me out. They're not a sponsor. But it's about 1025 right now. And um, <clears throat> so we have pike, and I believe we got three rainbow trout to cook up today. And actually, I thought I'd go with the recipe that has a pretty funny story that I want to well depends on your idea of funny but it's a cool story that I have from a while back um, when I first first started fishing in the Dakotas on the Missouri River and um, so going with that theme we're gonna do like a hot and Cheetos inspired uh, kind of recipe today so <clears throat> the story is that it was one of the first times I had uh, gone fishing in North Dakota and we were on the reservation, um, the native reservation of Standing Rock. And I bought a fishing pole from Walmart, just a cheap one, like 15 bucks. I think it had like six pound line on there. And um, uh, started catching some pike. And I, well, I was catching a few different types of fish, smallmouth, uh, white bass, um, northern pikes and uh, but the thing was when I would catch a pike they're pretty heavy they put on a good fight and they have really sharp teeth so they're biting through my line tearing off so I was getting frustrated I was like man I don't have any other fishing line and not only that um, they kept getting off my fish I kept catching fish and they're getting away and I was trying to eat so I was getting really frustrated I had a nine millimeter on my hip and mind you, I don't recommend that anybody does this, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Don't do this at home. Don't do this anywhere. But anyways, I grabbed my 9mm. On the next pike I caught, I was reeling it in. It was about 15 feet away. Sucker was getting really heavy. It was getting pretty close to getting off. Pull out my 9mm. Two hip fire shots. Uh, hits him right in the head body goes limp right away reel him in take him home for dinner and uh, cooked him up with um, I breaded him with with hot Cheetos and um, 
potato chips and it came out pretty good so I already know what to expect from this recipe but it's bringing back some memories and I, I like it it tastes good so I think we're gonna go ahead and go with that today but uh, yeah I thought I'd share that story with you guys and and a little history behind this recipe <clears throat> and actually we're not gonna use exactly flaming hot Cheetos the brand today I'm gonna use this other brand of um, chips that I like that are very close to hot Cheetos but it doesn't have the same name and they actually are cheaper like it's sometimes depending on when you go to the store sometimes they're a dollar twelve or a dollar fifty and they have a lot more chips in here and they taste better in my opinion they pack more flavor but they're pretty much hot Cheetos but with more flavor and they're cheaper so uh, if you guys want I can let you know where to get those from I definitely recommend them but um, I can't tell you that unless you subscribe and ask me where to get them okay so like the video subscribe and ask me where to get those chips and I will tell you and trust me you will not regret it they are really good and they're gluten free so for you gluten people out there that can't have it gluten free you're good really tasty but uh yeah i'm gonna go home clean up the fish and uh continue this video so uh you guys stay tuned all right so we're back here in the kitchen we're gonna get these fish cleaned up right now and filleted so that we can um get them marinated and get them cooking so i'm gonna go ahead and get started right now I'm going to pull out the pipe first. I have to go ahead and smash this guy in the head. Because of uh, <clears throat> what the fishing game officer told me. The lake that um, we had him at. They just took out 2,000 pounds of pike this year. I'm trying to get rid of them completely so that they can help the population of trout grow. Alright, so it's been a while since um, I filleted a pike and it's a lot more complicated than your typical fish like a trout or something because <clears throat> their spines are basically like a Y. They have two rows of backbones going on these two sides. The middle is all meat. So with these fish you gotta fillet them a special way. It's a lot more difficult. There's a lot more bones. That's why a lot of people like to just throw them away. They're real slimy also. So, uh, like I said, I haven't done this in a long time, but let's go ahead and try it out. So you just do like that, as I remember. And just cut backwards. Right here with a, I believe that's called a dorsal fin. Cut it right there. Just keep slicing back. Important to have a sharp knife and just sharpen mine. one piece of your pike fillet so we'll go ahead and fillet this so you guys can check that out and if you'd like to um, <clears throat> cook it with the skin on it's up to you, you can scale it but uh, I'll just go ahead and fillet it that's what I prefer to do If you guys couldn't tell before, I went and uh, wrapped the table in saran wrap so I can uh, 
keep some bacteria off the table. It's a little trick. Just a little piece of skin here. It's a little more of a delicate process since I got the saran wrap on the table. I'm not trying to puncture it. But I mean, you can see that's a pretty clean piece of skin right there for the most part. Good. Dump that in the bucket there. We got two more trout to uh, to fillet or butterfly, maybe both. Fillet one, butterfly the other. see it's not an amazing amount of meat that we got off there I haven't had practice in a long time filleting a pike but still more meat than you would get from a trout that's one life for more meat <clears throat> next up we got a nice big trout nice fat guy pretty strong I'm gonna go ahead and fillet him so we'll cut behind Honestly, typically I don't fillet trout. I don't think I ever really have. I tend to butterfly them and eat them with the skin on. Look at that. That's some beautiful meat right there. Look at that. If I didn't know any better, I'd call that some salmon meat right there. <clears throat> the reason I'm filleting it today. So I could get the seasoning and the breading on both sides of it. Or else I'd be cooking it with the skin on. It tastes good and it's a lot better for you that way. It's got a lot more vitamins and oils. Pretty sharp, but it's still having a hard time. Let's see here. That's some really pretty meat right there. All right, so we got these fish all cleaned up and everything. Took out some pin bones, and um gonna go ahead and wash them up now with cold water you want to make sure that's cold water so you're not cooking the fish before it needs to get cooked wash off any excess slime or scales or anything then <clears throat> I'm gonna bring it over to a plate So, just wrapped up all that saran wrap, made clean up pretty easy. Now, got my clean fillets right here. What I'm going to do is pat them dry with a paper towel. <clears throat> and the reason you want to do this is so that the seasonings that you are going to put on there will, will stick and not just water, water down your flavor or water down your meat. You'll get a way more fuller effect of the seasoning this way. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and flip them over. Make 
actually this plate's pretty wet so let's wipe this plate down I should have put a paper towel underneath so we'll put a paper towel underneath after that rookie mistake I'm going to cook all of them because I'm going to save some for tomorrow for other people that want to try them out. Okay, so now I can put those back onto the plate. Spread them on. Alright, so I decided I'm going to go ahead and uh, season this with some Slap Your Mama from Walker and Sons Cajun seasoning. <clears throat> because from the experience that I got last time, the hot Cheetos, when you fry them, the flavor tends to kind of water down and cook away. So this will give it an extra kick that um, will make up for that. It'll help compensate for that. And the hot Cheetos will give it that crunchiness, a little bit of flavor. So this is going to be the bread for our fish. And we might need two bags, I'm not sure. Alright, so we got two pans heating up. One for these potatoes I kind of pre-prepared. And one good trick that I didn't do, but um, to give them a better flavor and help them cook better is when you cut potatoes soak them in water to let all the starches come out I'm gonna put some olive oil in the pans fry up some of these potatoes for the side to eat with the fish Also cut up some onions that I'm going to throw in there. Got some parsley that I'm going to throw in there a little while after they cook for a while. Try and spread that evenly so they cook a lot better and faster. Alright, so our oil is nice and hot now. So we're going to go ahead and uh, bread up some of these fish in the hot Cheeto batter. Our bread, breading. Mm, things going off over there. Really want to work it in there so that it gets in all the creases. A lot of that flavor rubs into there. should have a red piece of fish by the time we're done. Ooh, that's hot. Need a shield for that one. Here's a piece of pike. What I should do is uh, cook them kind of separately. So we can keep track of which is which. Now for a pike. Cheetos. Mm. And we got our potatoes going over here. I'm gonna go ahead and flip over these pieces of fish now, so I can cook on the other side. And that feels pretty crispy. Uh oh. Nicely. They all feel pretty cr crunchy on their back, their front side, their back side.
Go ahead and add some parsley and my onions to um, these potatoes over here. Tell me that doesn't look great. Now I wish you guys could smell it because it smells great too. I know the fish is going to be done before the potatoes so the important part of this video is to taste the potatoes or the fish I should say and uh, give our, our take on that and then I'll probably eat this a little after the video so we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, some of this fish off of here. Pretty sure it's done cooking. So, put this on this side, let that cool down a bit, and then we'll go ahead and taste it. And there you have it, you guys. <clears throat> and that's the finished product of today's catch. I'm gonna go ahead and taste this now. See how it is. Got my trout on this side. Got the northern pike on this side. Got a little soft on the bottom, but it still tastes pretty, pretty great. Still pretty crunchy. Now let's, let's try a potato. That's pretty damn good. <clears throat> I might have overcooked it a little bit, but seriously, just tastes like chicken, honestly. Like hot Cheeto fried chicken. It tastes great. And um, I would definitely recommend you guys try this and get some of that Slap Your Mama uh, Cajun seasoning. Um, if you guys want to know where to find that, hit me up or maybe just look it up. But I'm going to sign off on this video on that note today was a great day of fishing i had a lot of fun with some family and uh caught a good amount of fish had some fun and um again this is wolf life wild subscribe to my channel if you guys haven't yet please like the video please and um give me further constructive criticism if you guys have any if you guys got any requests or or any ideas let me know and um, on that note, I'll sign up. Catch you guys later.